In this video, I will go over the homework that follows the lecture 22.1, focusing on doing um, differentiation with parametric equations. And as always, I hope that you watched this uh, lecture and let's get started. So here's the <coughs> homework's first question. And we are given uh, a set of parametric equations and we are asked to find the slope of the tangent line at t equals pi over 3. So to find the slope at uh, the tangent line, we need to find the, uh, so let's label the slope m. The slope is the derivative of the function uh, y with respect to x. Uh, but um, in our case, since the equation is given parametrically, the slope will be found using this formula. And we're going to be evaluating it at the provided uh, t value, which is pi over 3. So this is the plan. And first we're going to find the dy over dt, or rather dy dt. So it's just the derivative of the y function with respect to t. So it's uh, uh, plus uh, 20 sine of 5t. And let's go ahead and find dx dt. It will be fifteen cosine of five t. So the slope will be equal to twenty sine of five t divided by fifteen cosine of 5t, and we're going to evaluate it all at uh, pi over 3. So here I'm going to reduce everything by 5. So we have 4 sine of 5 pi over 3 divided by 3 cosine of 5 pi over 3. Uh, sine of 5 pi over 3 is What is it? Negative root 3 over 2? Oops. So we have negative root 3 over 2. And cosine of 5 pi over 3 is 1 half. So the final answer is negative 4 root 3 over 3. And there is an easy way to check whether it's right or wrong. We can uh, simply graph this parametric curve. And we're looking at, let's say, from 0 to 10. Um, looks like ellipse. And we're going, we're going to find this point. So 5 pi over 3. So that's the point. And we're looking at the slope. So let's just graph a line um, with that slope. Negative 4 square root of 3 over 3x. That's how we know something is wrong. Why is the slope negative when it should be positive? Oh, I don't know why. I don't know why I did this pi over three. It's it's at pi over three, right? And um, if we add some constant here, then we can see that indeed the tangent line at this point may have that slope. It's definitely not wrong. Um, and let's enter the answer. It is negative 4 square root of 3 divided by 3. Uh, 
All right, so here again we're given a set of parametric equations. And we just need to find the derivative function. So we're not looking for a slope, we're looking for the whole function. So dy dx is same as this and we're going to find the derivative of y so it's uh, negative 8 negative sine of 8 t times 8 and divided by the derivative of x so it's going to be negative 3 times cosine of 8 t times 8 so simplifying everything minus minus so we get eight thirds tangent of eight t and we have negative in the front Another similar problem. I'm not sure why I wrote y on top, but it doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter here. So the question is asking us to find dy dx. So we're going to differentiate y with respect to t and divide it by the derivative of x with respect to t. So it should be pretty straightforward. Um, the derivative of x is negative 21, 1 over 2 square root of t. And the derivative of y is negative 4, uh, 1 over 2 square root of 8 t plus 3 uh, times 8 according to the chain rule. Simplify. Uh, and what do we get? Uh, we get, so these twos cancel. We have um, 32 over 21. And here we get a uh, square root of t over 8t plus 3. As long as t is greater than 0, these expressions are equivalent. And uh, let's enter the answer. Here's another problem. Uh, this time we're looking for a second derivative, which is just a derivative of the first derivative. So let's go over the process um, to find the second derivative with respect to x, we're going to take the derivative of the first derivative. Um, but the first derivative, so how do we go from this uh, to what we want is to find the first derivative so here's kind of what we want. Um, of a parametric curve, we're going to do this. But that's going to be a function of t. So if you're differentiating that with respect to dx, you're going to have to take derivative of that with respect to t and divide it by the dx with respect to t. So 
uh, we're gonna do it in stages. The first step is let's find dx dt. So dx dt is just uh, x prime. So it's gonna be 4t minus 4. Now let's find dy dt. So dy dt will be negative 24t squared minus 6t minus 5. And now we need to put the first derivative together. So dy dt over dx dt, that will be negative 24t squared minus 6t minus 5 divided by 4t minus 4. And now we need to differentiate this with respect to t. So differentiating this with respect to t means we have to use the uh, quotient rule. So it's going to be the derivative of the numerator. times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all that divided by the denominator squared so that's the numerator of our final answer and now finally we can put it all together so we can we're going to be putting this all together. We're going to take we're going to take this um, expression, and I'm the only thing I'm thinking here is should I try to simplify it or not? And you don't have to try to simplify it, but the idea is you have to take this and divide it by dx over dt. So, the final answer will be, and I'll try to simplify the guess, I'll take out the negative, no, I'm not going, I don't want to. It's going to be a pain in the butt to enter the answer, but um, ugly doesn't mean it's wrong. So, we're dividing this by... So all of this is being divided by 4t minus 4, which is the dx dt. But instead of writing it like this, we can just add another power over here, and that will do the same thing. So that's our final answer. Let's go ahead and enter it. So next time I'll try to be more concise. And here's my chance for the next time. So uh, the previous problem was number three. Oh no, number four. So this is number five. And here's my parametric equation. And for the second derivative, we're going to use this formula, or rather the process. So it's going to be the derivative of the first derivative with respect to x. And because we have everything in terms of t, 
so we're gonna make it look like this and step one to find dx dt so it's just going to be 20 cosine 40 uh, then we're going to find dy dt that's just going to be 4 sine of 4 t so dy dx will then be uh, 1 fifth I guess I can put it together in two steps so we're gonna have 4 sine 4 t divided by 20 cosine of 4 t so this will be same as 1 fifth tangent 4 t and now we're going to differentiate that with respect to t so that's going to be 1 fifth secant squared 4 t times 4 and the final answer we're going to put together by taking this derivative and dividing it by the derivative of x function so simplifying this we get secant squared 4t divided by 25 cosine of 4t but uh, dividing by cosine is same as multiplying by secant so we can just we can just rewrite this whole thing as one twenty fifth of secant cube of fourteen. Let's see what Newton thinks about that. Uh, place the arguments of any uh -huh -huh -huh. so four T will put here but we're going to also raise this to the power of 3, so let's make it like this. All right. This was problem number 5. Next one is number 6. We have a set of... Uh, parametric equations and we're looking for find all the points where the slope is equal to zero so that means we have to find uh, we have to solve the equation m equals zero where m is the derivative of y with respect to x but for uh, parametric equations dy dx is the same as dy dt over dx dt so to find that we're going to differentiate the y of t with respect to t And differentiate x with respect of t, so 12 cosine of 6t. So reducing everything by 6 will give us 7 halves tangent uh, 6t. And we also have a constraint domain. And setting up and solving this equation. means we're looking for when tangent of 6t is equal to 0 so that means 6t is equal to some multiple of pi so t will be equal to some multiple of pi over 6 and there are 
exactly and this is why it's important for you to make sure this is a strict inequality not uh, not strict the way I put it originally and there are only two k values that make t that place t into that interval so k must be equal to either 0 or 1 so t will be equal to either 0 or pi over 6 and when t is equal to 0 uh, x is 0 y is 7 and when t is equal to pi over 6 uh, x is um, 0 and um, y is negative 7 so that's the answer now before I enter this as the answer it doesn't hurt to check the work and this is how we check the work So we can see that um, when t is 0, we have a horizontal tangent line, and here we also have a horizontal tangent line. So we're pretty confident that this is the right answer. So 0, 7, and 0, negative 7 are the two points where the graph has the horizontal tangent line. All right, next question. We are given a set of parametric equations and dy dx in this case will be dy dt divided by dx dt so dy dt is negative 2, dx dt is 2, so the answer is negative 1. Same as before, so dy dx is same as dy dt over dx dt, so dy dt is negative 2 uh, and dx dt is 0, so this slope does not exist, so that most likely implies that we have a vertical tangent line, but uh, to answer this question, we're just going to enter this symbol. Uh, same as before, dy dx is dy dt over dx dt, so dy dt is uh, 1 over 5t times 5, and dx dt is negative uh, 1 over 6t times 6, so the answer is negative 1.
we're looking for the equation of the tangent line uh, for the following parametric curve at a given point and we're looking at t equals 1. Um, so we're still going to use this formula Uh, it's called the point slope formula so as long as you know the slope and the point you can find the equation of the tension line now to find x naught y naught um, all we have to do we just have to evaluate x at 1 and y at 1 so when x equals when t is equal to 1 x is equal to 9 e to the power of negative 6 and when t is equal to 1, y is equal to negative 3 e to the power 9. So this is my x naught, this is my y naught. Now to find the slope, we're going to uh, recall that slope is the derivative of the function evaluated at the given point. Uh, but in our case, it will be obtained this way. So, let's do it all in one single line. Uh, dy dt is uh, negative 3e to the power 9t times 9. And dx dt is 9 times e to the power negative 6t times negative 6. And all that is when t is equal to 1. So, what do we have? We have negative 27e to the power 9 divided by negative 54 e to the power of negative 6. So simplifying everything we get e to the power 15 over 2. Now let's put it all together. The equation will be y minus negative 3 e to the 9. The slope is 1 half e to the power 15 and that's what we subtract from the x. Now to simplify it we're gonna have to do some simple algebra here. So we distribute the slope minus uh, we're gonna have 9 halves e to the power 9 but then we have plus 3 e to the power 9 on the left, so we're going to subtract 3 e to the power 9, and the final answer will be 1 half e to the power 15 times x minus 15 halves e to the power 9. Um, what's nice about this problem is that we can check our work uh, relatively easy. All we have to do is we have to graph the curve. And let's replace T with S. We're talking about S being equal to 1. So this is what it looks like this is what the graph is and when t is equal to 1 we are we are pretty far this problem is kind of uh, unrealistic in terms of us trying to visualize what's going on with this e to the power uh, there it is right that's we can rescale everything, so yeah, sure. Let's try to rescale. Right, so this is my point. There you go. Right, so that's my point. And now the easy way to check whether you computed the equation correctly, the equation of the tension line, is to just type it up in Desmos. So y equals 1 half e to the power of 15x minus 15 
halves e to the power 9. And look at that. Does it look like a tangent line? Then we probably got the right answer. So let's enter it. e to the power 15 over 2x minus 15 e to the power 9 um, over 2. That was problem number 10. Number 11 is next. Uh, determine the equation of another equation of the tangent line. Uh, so let's enter the uh, parametric equation. So we're going to follow the point slope formula. And the point is just going to be the x evaluated at 1, y evaluated at 1. So here we're going to have it's pretty ugly, but it is what it is. So x evaluated at 1 is 5 ln 4 plus 6, y evaluated at 1 is negative 9 ln 6 minus 2, so that's my x and y. To find the slope, I'm going to differentiate dy with respect to t and dx with respect to t and evaluate it at t equals 1. So here's what we get. Uh, dy dt is uh, negative 9 1 over 6 t times 6. dx dt is uh, 5, 1 over 4t times 4, all that evaluating at t equals 1. So when t is equal to 1, everything pretty much goes away. So the answer is just negative 9 fifths. So the final answer is y minus y0 is equal to the slope times x minus x0. So, to isolate y, I'm going to distribute the negative 9 fifths over. So, it's going to be plus 9 ln 4 uh, plus 54 over 5. And I'm going to add the what we're subtracting on the left hand side to both sides and technically we can simplify this is it necessary probably not so here we get a ln of um, uh, two-thirds and here we have uh, 44 over 5 I guess that's going to be the answer but let's check um, so here's my equation I have 5 ln 4t plus 6 minus 9 ln 6t minus 2 um, So now let's replace t with s, and let's set s to be equal to 1. So where are we at? And let's enter this equation. kind of looks like right so where's the point oh there's the point uh, let's make it 10 right, uh, let's make it 100 and uh, the green is our curve and the red is our tangent line so looks like we are pretty close yep that's that's the right answer uh, 
I wonder if I can just copy it over. Yep. One more reason to test it with Desmos before entering it as your final answer. Alright, so I love these questions because sometimes to answer them all you have to do is just graph the function and this is exactly what I intend on doing right now. The question is to check the concavity and I'm going to do exactly that. Negative e to the power 3t and as it may sound extremely easy, uh, it may not always be the case. So let's take a look at this one. And where's the point? So this is the point, and looking at this graph, it's really hard to tell the concavity, right? So as it easy as it sounded, this task, it's impossible to do. Just by graphing and looking at it, the concavity is not clear. So this is why the analytical approach is actually um, important to know and understand. So um, analytically, how do I figure out the concavity? I'm going to find the uh, second derivative. So we're looking for d2y dx2, which can be found by using this. Uh, it's the derivative of the first derivative with respect to x, but the first derivative is expressed like this, and then the second derivative would be expressed like this. So let's go ahead and find dx dt first. It's going to be negative 3e to the power 3t. Let's go ahead and find dy dt. It will be negative 18e to the power 3t. Let's go ahead and express dy dx. It will be negative 18e to the 3t divided by negative 3e to the 3t. So it will be just 6. And, and uh, finally, looking for the second derivative. So putting it all together, what do we get? We get dy dx. Uh, so we get, we should put derivative of 6 divided by uh, negative 3e to the power 3t. But derivative of, of 6 is 0. So we so it's definitely not concave up or concave down. Whether it's inflection point or not really depends on whether at actually hold on. There's something weird going on here. The It's, it, it is equal to zero. Is this a straight line? Hold on. Jesus Christ. Uh, this is such a bad question. Um, if you look at this graph, it's literally just a straight line. So I don't know what I'm, uh, it's not even curved. It's just a straight line. So as a straight line, it doesn't have a uh, concavity by definition. Uh, it's not an inflection point because inflection point is defined as the point at which concavity changes. So by elimination, I'm going to check this, but I'm going to complain right now to Newton and let them know that this problem is a terrible problem. Uh, so if you see this one, let me know. All right, let's continue.
Which statement is true about the inflection points on the curve represented by the parametric? Huh. Let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and find the second derivative. Uh, by first finding dx dt, then dy dt, and then uh, dy dx. And now <coughs> we're going to find um, dy dx dt so we're going to use the quotient rule derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus derivative of the uh, denominator times the numerator all that by the denominator squared and and uh, here we have Uh, 6t, so we have uh, 12t squared plus 12t minus 6t squared minus 4 divided by 2t plus 2 squared. Simplifying this a bit more, so we have 6t squared plus 12t minus 4 divided by 2t plus 2 uh, squared. And the final answer is we have to divide all of this by dx dt. So we're going to take this and divide it by dx dt. But dx dt is another 2t plus 2. So we simply get this. Now, whether we have an inflection point or not depends on whether there is a t value where the this changes the sign from positive to negative um, and the easiest way to see that is to graph this expression so i'm going to go to desmos and actually graph this as a function of x i want to see if it goes from positive to negative And we see that it does, right? So it has uh, points where it goes from positive to negative, and that means it has points where concavity changes. And if it has points where concavity changes, that means by definition there are inflection points. So, uh, however, I do want to see the reasoning here. Yeah, so technically you don't need to solve for the numerator. You can just see that the denominator is, uh, has an odd multiplicity, so there is going to be a change in sign. So it's a little excessive, this solution. I wouldn't follow it. Um, anyway, let's move on. And we finished the homework. If you have any questions about um, differentiating 
um, parametric curves or rather um, obtaining the derivatives of functions defined parametrically, please let me know.